I think it'll be cool for Cindy when she's older. It, I mean, if she wants to take over the place, for her to say that her parents built the house. <sighs> That's fun. In one of the most remote corners of northwestern Montana, John and Etta Smith are building a home and bison ranch. It's been John's dream since he was a kid. Completely off the grid. Living and building off grid is really nothing more than just a throwback to how people used to live. They will stop at nothing to make their dream come true. We got 16 degrees and snowing. God, this weather sucks. Well, that's pretty icy. Oh, I got it. Okay. Back up, they're gonna come in. To lose that investment in the buffalo would just be terrible. Oh my God, God. Uh, Failure is not an option. We are in the foothills of the Mission Mountains in western central Montana. Good boy. Okay, sorry. <laughs> snow, he's the Montana snow dog. I can't imagine this whole situation without him. He brings our spirits up for sure. When you're building not only a home, but an entire bison ranch from scratch in remote and wintry wilderness like John and Etta Smith, spirits sometimes need lifting. Originally, we planned on finishing mid to end of December, and now we're looking at to the end of January. It's a frustrating situation. Living and building off-grade, which is what we're doing right now, is really nothing more than just a throwback to how people used to live. So far, they've built the house from the foundation up to the roof. Only the shingles, siding, doors, and porch are missing from the outside. Inside, they've framed out the rooms and built the lofts. The bison have been delivered and corralled. But the new well, which will be pumped by windmill, has yet to be dug. Right now, we're so far late into the winter, it's just going to get colder and windier every single day that we're out here. In the last week, we put a uh, temporary front door in just to keep the weather out because it snowed, and we were just getting big snow drifts that we're building up inside our house. It's still not warm in there yet without our fireplace. We finished putting the beams up. Today, we just have the plumber and electrician. They're helping rough some stuff in. Buffalo are doing good. They're just eating. They're happy. The next couple days, I'm going to let them out of the corrals into the main fence area, our pastured area. Building off-grid definitely has its challenges. Watering the animals is a huge process, especially in winter, because uh, we don't have electricity going all the time. We need to build a fire next to this thicket to make sure that it doesn't freeze. That's warm. We hook up the hoses, turn on the generator so the water can run. Once the tubs are full, then we have to run the water out of all the hoses so that they don't freeze. Whether I want to do this or not, every day in the winter, it just has to be done. That's one day, and then you have to do it the next day. <laughs> right now, it's about 16 degrees and snowing. Slowly but surely, huh, babe? Yeah. My 16s. As John and Etta continue work on their new windmill, the company who will drill the well is, so far, a no-show. I really hope the guy comes out to drill this well because then we could start really moving in the right direction with the windmill before it starts getting super, super cold. Can you, like, hold it steady? Otherwise, it's just gonna... There you go. It's just not gonna straighten out. None of this stuff really lines up very well. The pieces within this just don't made up, so none of the bolts fit through. I almost think it would have been better to order, like, an antique one that was 100 years old. <laughs> the well driller is not here yet, so... Oh, goodness. I'm just gonna give him a quick call if you want to hang on. Okay. Yeah. He said he was gonna be here several hours ago, and he's still not here. So, just got off the phone with the water well driller. They were worried about weather, not being able to get a truck down the mountain over here. It's just getting really frustrating. Long story short, they'll be here in two hours. They're not going to get to drill today. The weather is only going to keep getting colder. But he's going to park the truck out there. We'll show him, and then tomorrow morning we'll, we'll get on it. So, no water well today. We ran into Montana time, which is just a different speed of life. 
Maybe that stems a little bit from the independent spirit of people that live out here. There we go. That's at least a little bit straighter, but it just makes it ever continually harder to come and settle this area. We can rotate it now. If at least we got this finished, huh? Yeah. Step two will be building the tower. The other part of that. That's for another day. Edda, do you want to run and grab the truck? Sure. So right now, I have to move a ton of hay into the corrals with the bison. Because we don't have a tractor to move it, I kind of just had to get creative. Uh, I tie the end of that tie down to the hitch of the truck, and I pull it along behind me. A mature bison can weigh up to 2,000 pounds and eat 40 pounds of alfalfa per day during the winter months. A one-ton bale like this will feed the nine bison for a little over a week. Sometimes it doesn't work. We'll see if it comes off again. Getting the alfalfa across the yard is only half the battle. John's close friend, Josh, steps up to help Etta move the bale into the corral. You want to help me push it in? Sure. Oh, this is a little bit bigger. That's 2,000 pounds. <laughs> Even though it's round, it really does not roll very well. This sage sucks. They're like stupid speed bumps. You want to help me push it in? Sure. To feed the bison, Etta and friend Josh need to roll a one-ton bale of hay into the corral. And it's about as easy to do as it sounds. This sage sucks. Right away, there's an obstacle. They're like stupid speed bumps. I might have my axe in the back. We had to axe the sage because it kind of acts like a speed bump. And with 2,000 pounds, a speed bump is huge. So we got the sage out of the way. Ready? Yeah. We can leave it here. A ton of hay is probably going to last a week and a couple days for, for these bison right now. Thank you. No problem. Is that what I think it is? So we're wrapping up the end of the day. A big boom truck, it looks like. Drill a pipe on it? Yeah. And all of a sudden, this truck shows up, and it's the well driller. After losing a day of drilling to a weather-related delay, Dave Beck, the well driller, is finally on site to scout the location for the new well, which will eventually be pumped by windmill. We just decided to drill down in here. Whatever works out for your pastures and corrals and where you're going to use your water, a convenient location. John and Etta's land consists of a hard clay bed over an aquifer, which can be drilled to release an artesian flow for a well. We had a friend who well witched for us, found a place nearby. I'm a little bit skeptical of water well witching. There it is. Yeah. So how does that work? Magic. Yeah. <laughs> water has a lot of energy, and so you're just feeling the energy. I kind of like this flat spot right here. Got a high spot for my windmill. We talked over some of the relevant reasons why it was a good spot to drill. Easy location for us to set up on, and we're good with it. If that's where you want to do it, yeah. Perfect. Okay. It just made sense. It was high up on a hill for wind to get to the windmill and a good spot to distribute water. Even so, it's still always a crapshoot on where you drill. You never really know if you're going to hit water or at what depth. Tomorrow, it's just going to be a day of catch up. Make things go quicker tomorrow. This is like a really steep angle. Be careful. Today, it's really foggy. We woke up kind of cold. Roofing the house is just going to be an absolutely miserable process. Please be careful. Whoa. I got it. Okay. That was going backwards. High up on that roof, it's windy out here, it's cold. It's just, it's not going to be fun. It's about having the most energy efficient house so that you can live off the grid. That's true. Not about having fun. Yeah. With Josh here, Etta here, we decided that we're just going to try to get as much of the roof done as we can today. With roofing underway, John leaves the work to Etta and Josh so he can assist with drilling the new well. Well driller showed up, showed him where we wanted to drill. We agreed it was probably going to be a pretty good spot and got them all backed up, set up, ready to go, and they made quick work of it.
and they estimated $27 a foot. So when you consider how important water is out here, that's uh, it's a small price to pay. John has budgeted approximately $2,500 for the well, and he's hoping to find water no deeper than 100 feet. You're running water to it now? We have water in that tank in the middle of the truck. And if we can't blow it out dusty, then we add water and blow it out mud. The first four feet of soil or clay out here is going to be frozen, but it's really no problem for the drill bit to make it through that. So the only thing that really affects drilling in the winter is the water that you use to drill with. You circulate that through the hole and the whole drill bit and drill string, which is all the pipe and bit and everything going down in the hole, and it comes back out and that water just sprays over everything. So when it's really cold out like this, that water tends to just freeze solid on everything. And it makes it really hard on your controls, on you, on the pipe, you know, it causes havoc. 48 feet? Yeah, feet, yeah. About 50 feet down, there's a problem. We got down to about 50 feet realized that rather than creating a clean hole where you can drive casing through, it was just swelling and trapping that pipe and swelling back into place. We don't have enough of an open hole there with too much mud coming in. With the hole closed up, they may be done for the day. We have to go back to the drawing board, figure it out, trying to think of a plan B. Drilling for the new well on John and Etta's off-the-grid property has unexpectedly stopped. We got down to about 50 feet, realized that rather than creating a clean hole where you can drive casing through, it was just swelling and trapping that pipe and swelling back into place. We don't have enough of an open hole there with too much mud coming in. The start to drilling was delayed a full day, and this problem will set them back even more. Trying to think of a plan B. If they are unable to continue drilling on this spot, they will have to start from scratch, but there is no room in the budget for that. It's always something, huh? The latest setback is causing problems for other ranch operations. Today I was planning on letting the bison out of the corrals as well. Do you think it would be bad if I let them out and those guys are drilling? John consults bison mentor and contractor Chris Sullivan about the issue. By too much noise and that kind of stuff, I mean, they'll be way over there drilling it. Well, if they're over there, maybe they'll hang out near the corral better. Because the water well drillers have delayed, I didn't want all of that noise to have them be more stressed out being around that. I brought this to uh, flag my entire place today. I'm going to flag my entire fence with uh, orange construction tape. Can I have some more tape, babe? Yeah, I am glad we started this now. flags on the fence might make a little bit of a difference. You can see it going down the line. It's important to have a flag on this fence. I rode a colt up one of our little hills and I came over and it was really eerie because I knew there was a fence there but I couldn't see it. This is completely invisible. Bison can see the color orange. I don't know if they see it exactly like we do. I guess it's worked in the past so that's why we're sticking with orange. But at the end of the day, buffalo are still wild animals. You know, they're not domesticated cows. You can't really hurt them. Worst case scenario is buffalo bust out of the fence, want to run away, run up the side of the mountain. I have to go hunt them down and that's it. You're not going to really get them back into your pasture after that. It's a huge concern to lose that investment in the buffalo it would just be terrible. <laughs> It's cold, it's right at the freezing point. It's gonna be slow working in the cold and rain. It's just slippery and dangerous up here. At this point, Josh and I are about half done with the roof. Today, I'm hoping we could get close to done. We're to the point where it will maybe only be a half day to finish and button everything up. At the site for John and Etta's new well, driller Dave Beck has attached a larger bit to the rig and has resumed operations. 120 feet right now we're pretty close but you just never know an aquifer is not just like this bubble of water underground you have like a gravel formation where that water is going to be trapped in there and it's just all the space between the sand and gravel that is where that clean water is going to be my limit for this is probably going to be 180 feet anything past that you've missed the zone at a depth of 180 feet, the cost of digging the well would be almost double the $2,500 John has budgeted. But the importance of this well to the success of their livestock operations cannot be understated. 
I can help water to corral areas for buffalo. And when we have a bunch of buffalo here, that's going to be really awesome. As they near a depth of 130 feet, there are promising signs. What you have coming out of the drill stem right there is evident that we're getting close to water. It's pretty watery mud. This weather sucks. Beautiful Montana weather, 40 and raining. Mm -hmm. Do you see Etta over there? So today, Etta and I are gonna try to cut one of the buffalo out of the herd in the corrals and let it out. They will release the bison one at a time to make sure each one is trained to the electric fence and adapts to being in the open pasture. You know, I was trying to wait till the well drillers were done because they make so much noise, uh, but... Are you going to tell the drillers that the bison are out now or are you going to let them figure it out by themselves? I think it should be a good surprise for them. <laughs> At current stockyard prices, a grass-fed pregnant female bison runs about $3,000. And John bought nine of them, so there's a lot at stake. I'm not nervous. I am. It's an investment in money. This is a livelihood. We're going to try to leave one in this big area right here. And we're going to run around this side gate. Josh is here as well. You want to get on the gate? Yeah. The more people we have to make that process happen, the better. Wait, just stay yeah, I got close it. to the fence I got right here. Don't keep moving this way. I'll move them that way. Okay. Bison still have that wild instinct. I want to make sure that everybody's safe, the animals and people. We'll have some hay up, too. So All right. I see that? Okay, just back off. Yeah, back off. They're going to come in. And moms. The dominant matriarch bison rushes in to feed. Josh. She's now separated from the group. Gate. I'm going to let her out. Okay, John, you ready? Yeah. Hey, 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 hey. She has an open path to the pasture, but she's uncertain about what to do. Hey, go. Hey, go. Hey, go. With a little persuasion, she finally exits the corral. <laughs> she's prancing. Yeah, she's very happy. Because she was the matriarch of the herd, she's putting on a big display for all the animals, kind of telling them, like, hey, this is my pasture. I'm head honcho over here. So it's awesome to see her being a bison. Oh, oh, oh. She saw it. <laughs> her name should be Marilyn Monroe. Why is that? Because she's curvy and beautiful, and she has, like, this presence about her. I think she's the best looking of them all. Oh, by far, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's a happy moment right there for her. Yeah. She's happy, we're happy, no one got hurt, so it's a good day. When we let the other bison out, they'll follow her lead. Next time on Building Off the Grid, Big Sky Ranch. There's a lot to be done on the house. Weather, cold, daylight, it's just impeding progress even more. It is really cold. This metal is very slick. Woo! I thought we were getting fresh doors. That's the way it was on the drive. I'm just bummed out. Today I'm going to build the tower. I feel like 50% confident that this will work. That's really dangerous. I'm just getting ready to put this porch on. This is a lot of money. It's going to be a little short. Dang it. I'm going to be spending the rest of my life paying this house off.